Hello, I'm John Harris, editor of Politico. I'm here with my colleague, Todd S. Purdom. Todd, let's assess the aftermath. We just had a big barroom brawl in Washington. We've got broken glass, uh, tables kicked over, but let's, uh, let's sift through the wreckage and figure out where we stand for next time. We're having another confrontation in January. Yep. Uh, is it going to be the same all over again, or have the dynamics in some way fundamentally shifted? I can't shake the feeling that it'll be a little bit different, although mm. we do, you do wonder. We spent 16 days with the government shutdown, and all we got was this lousy T-shirt. So, right. Uh, I'm going to have a contrary uh, uh, take to President Obama. He came uh, forward today and very solemnly said, there are no winners. Actually, I see lots of winners, uh, including in some surprising places. Maybe winners isn't cr quite the right word, but there's a number of Washington actors who uh, are more secure in their position post-shutdown than they were pre. John Boehner uh, is, uh, uh, has won new credibility from the Tea Party yep. caucus. The question is, what does he do with that credibility? Nancy Pelosi has shown that she can run a very disciplined Democratic caucus, had uh, virtually no defections. She held her team together. Harry Reid uh, uh, has the, the uh, thanks and the praise of Democrats because he was the main guy for the no concession strategy. And Mitch McConnell uh, gets to uh, come off as the adult in the room. Probably helps him, at least in the general election context in Kentucky. So rather than uh, 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 saying there are no winners, I see winners everywhere. What do you think about uh, my admittedly somewhat unorthodox take? I think that's true, and I think you have to add also that President Obama clearly at the end of the day is himself right. a winner right. uh, in a way that a lot of Democrats wouldn't have predicted a month ago. Uh, he hung tough in a way that he had not in prior negotiations. Right. He, he made good on his word not to bargain over the debt ceiling. And uh, Our Carrie, uh, our uh, Carrie Budoff-Brown uh, makes a good point today in her story, uh, I think maybe with John Allen, yes. which is that uh, uh, President Obama has shown he can win uh, with a defensive strategy, that is uh, making sure that uh, Republicans don't uh, uh, impose something on him that he doesn't want. That's a much different question than winning with an affirmative strategy, i.e. some part of his agenda uh, that he manages to get passed. Uh, and to do that, I don't see any alternative but for him to figure out some way to work with John Boehner. Right. And for John Boehner to figure out some way right. to work with him. And help uh, work, uh, help share some of the thoughts on this idea piece that you're working your way through right now. You basically see them as two guys who don't necessarily like each other, but they are fundamentally locked in terms of self-interest. They're locked by the Constitution, and they also have common interests that they wouldn't necessarily readily admit to the right. other. Th if Boehner wants to get something done on taxes and entitlement reform, he has to work with the president. If the president wants to get immigration reform, which John Boehner actually supports, right. he has to work with John Boehner. The president probably should stop uh, cr publicly saying things about John Boehner, like it's hard for him to work with me because it makes him look weak. Right. He might think that. It's not pretty useful to, to talk about that in public, I don't think. I mean, the fact of the matter is President Obama has not had a major legislative victory, a kind of a, a, a legacy enhancing health victory, uh, except health care, and that's almost four years ago now. Uh, seems to me he's facing a choice right now as, he, uh, as we head into 2014. Does he try to find that center, that, that grand bargain that's been so elusive with John Boehner, and, uh, and, and a lot, see if that uh, allows him to pivot and get some big achievements? Or does he say, look, no, we're taking this right to uh, November 2014, and my chance for a consequential presidency rests on Democrats winning uh, uh, back the House in 2014. So I'll have two years at the beginning of my presidency with Democratic control, two years at the end. Well, that may be, but he saw the limits of having Democratic control in the beginning of his presidency when he could barely pass health care as it was in which he had fractious relations with the Democrats right. in Congress. You couldn't say he had really great congressional relations with those Democrats in that early period. Also, it's a tall order, right? According to the PR, our campaign junkies, uh, people like Alex Eisenstadt, Democrats yeah. may be better off uh, in, in terms of their prospects of taking uh, back the House. It's still a long shot. Yeah, exactly. And you and I also saw, if you run the whole show, you run the whole show and the public holds you accountable. And right. we, we lived through Bill Clinton's effectively parrying off a Republican congressional majority to get things done, and it worked very well for him. All he right. was able to define himself in opposition. Well, we've just uh, laid out several story ideas now. I suppose it's incumbent upon us uh, to go, go write, write them. them. That's the hard part. <laughs> I'm going to go open a vein and let the blood yeah, spurt. Exactly. Uh, you do the same. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.